Hello and welcome to our 10-minute video series. This is for Ultimate Access and my name is Mary Jane Rodriguez. Today's video covers uh, SEMA's management case study exam for the February 2018 sitting. It is on the pre-seen company Norton, an oil and gas company, and its finance operation shared service center, which is FOSSC for short. Today's topic is on F2 syllabus topic A part 2. Now F2 is a very important section of the MCS. As we all know, MCS competency will talks about at least 39% of the exam covers technical knowledge and F2 actually falls under this 39%. So today's topic is going to be an important one. Um, in particular, we are looking at Section C, which is to calculate the weighted average cost of capital for an incorporated entity. A little bit of background on this F2 topic, the weighted average cost of capital, is that the formula, as can be seen on the slide up ahead, you will see that there are two parts to the WAC formula. We have the equity part and we have the debt part. And if there are more sources of funding, capital funding, then uh, this WAC formula becomes a little bit longer. But for now, we'll stick to the simple formula, which covers equity and debt. When we look at equity, we have the cost of equity of the company, and we multiply this with the market value of the equity over the total market value of equity and debt. Now on the other side, we have the cost of debt after tax. And then we multiply this with the market value of debt over the total market value of equity and debt. Between the two figures, we add this both together to give us our weighted average cost of capital. Now, debt and equity are the two components that make up the company's capital funding. Okay, so obviously debt comes from lenders and equity comes from shareholders. These two kinds of stakeholders would like some sort of return on the money that they provide to the company. WAC indicates the return that these two stakeholders can expect to receive. In short, you know, WAC can be looked upon as the investor's opportunity cost for taking that risk to invest in the company. The WAC is actually the required return for the company and directors use WAC to evaluate investments and you know make decisions, make investment decisions. They try to look at whether an opportunity is financially viable and they use WAC as a discount rate for cash flows with risks. Uh, looking at it that the, the risk that you undertake on this, uh, on this investment is similar to the risk that we currently are facing as a company. So on this next slide, we will have a look at some of the pre-seen information that has been given to us and try to work out weighted average cost of capital on it. I've taken a snippet of the consolidated statement of profit or loss and the consolidated statement of financial position because I needed those figures to work out some sort of numbers for the weighted average cost of capital. I stumbled on a little bit of a hurdle because the cost of equity was not provided to us on the pre-scene, as well as the market value of equity. There were no share prices information that were given to us. So I tried to work it out based on the book value of equity and using uh, the value of debt as well as some of the information with regards to the finance cost and the tax expense that we have on the statement of profit or loss. And in the end, I could figure out that 87% was the value of equity and 13% was the value of debt. And then I worked it out also that the cost of debt was about 9.5%. Unfortunately, I'm a little short in the end because I did not get the cost of equity figure. In any which way, although the calculation of the weighted average cost of capital is not worked out at this current moment, you may be provided with the cost of equity at the exam question or better yet, maybe a little bit of discussion with regards to the weighted average cost of capital and how it affects the company. Remember at the exams, 
you will not be asked to perform complex calculations, but there will be questions where it will test your knowledge on the calculations of, for example, like the weighted average cost of capital. So in actual fact, in the end, you will need to know how the weighted average cost of capital is calculated to be able to add more or give more insight into the calculation and how it affects the company. Our next slide will cover a little bit of a question with regards to the WAC. Um, on the question here, it says Amber Lees has emailed you the following. As you know, we use WAC to evaluate all our current projects. The board is concerned that the following news article will affect the way we evaluate any future opportunities. Attached, please find the news article. Northern Group's shares are on the decline. Shares in the oil giant Norton took a major dip yesterday amid rumors that the company is likely to report disappointing estimated results when its profit for the year ended 31 December 2017 are published. The company's share price is at its lowest since the oil price crash in early 2016. The board will be meeting this afternoon to discuss this. I need you to draft an explanation for me to present to the board as to how a fall in the share price will affect Norton's weighted average cost of capital. And as per usual, when we tackle a question, I would like to remind everybody the steps to write an answer plan, pick out the text, build your response around the requirement, write down five to six points, and list down the keywords, theories that you may want to use. So in this question, the requirements are in red at the bottom. My answer plan will include an intro to the share price, an intro to weighted average cost of capital, talk about it. Uh, I know that cost of equity has something to do with weighted average cost of capital. I know that cost of debt as well is far, part of WAC. And in the end, I would like to talk about the relationship between the share price and WAC and how a fall in the share price will affect weighted average cost of capital. My answer starts off and I talk about the share prices. The share prices are determined by shareholders' confidence in the company. So it manifests itself uh, in terms of supply and demand in the, in the stock market. If there's a high demand for the shares um, due to favorable factors, the price would increase. If the company's future growth potential looks bad, as in this case, with the recent news about Norton's expected year-end results, it could drive the share price down. Now, weighted average cost of capital is the average rate of return that the company expects to compensate all its different stakeholders. So as we mentioned earlier, lenders and equity holders will expect this return, and this, that is the weighted average cost of capital. The weighting is according to an actual or estimated market value of each element, normally equity and debt. A high WAC is typically a signal of higher risks associated with the company's operations. Stakeholders tend to require additional return to assume additional risk. I go on to talk about cost of equity, and I say one component of WAC is the cost of equity. The cost of equity is entirely a matter for market forces, and the board has very little direct influence over it. So there's really not much that the board can do, especially Norton, because Norton is a listed company and the share prices are determined by market forces. So sometimes expectations in the market may be different from what the board expects it to be. And it talks about it here, where the concerns express, expressed by analysts may not be the same as the boards. And sometimes this can push the cost of equity up and down. Remember that cost of equity is mainly based on the market value of the company. So uh, share prices, when they fluctuate, it affects cost of equity. In Norton's case, 87% of long-term funding comes from equity. So a change in the share price will change cost of equity, will definitely impact weighted average cost of capital. The other component of WAC is the cost of debt. This is less likely to be sensitive to perceptions of risk because the cost of debt is set Normally, lenders would have protection and they would protect themselves by having a contract with the company to tell the company that you will pay this money back with so much of interest. The only risk here is that we default and we don't uh, pay on time or pay the loan back. The lenders are also protected. They have covenants against the company. The loans are covered by assets of the company. So in ending, 
I talk a little bit about the weighted average cost of capital being the rate demanded by the stock market for the company's funding. Uh, future cash flows and any forecasts are discounted at this rate because this rate takes into account the element of risk in projects and in opportunities. The lower the weighted average cost of capital is, the lower the cost of finance is. So one interpretation that we could take is that maybe a fall in share prices is the market signaling us that they need a higher rate of return from the investment they made in the company. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for listening through. Good luck for your exams.